Hi everyone. In our previous video, uh, we learned that Amazon S3 is a kind of unlimited object based storage. We also learned that we cannot mount it as a device or drive or a file system. Because by default, S3 is meant to be accessed through REST APIs and it's not possible to mount it as a POSIX enabled file system. But recently a feature became generally available which is going to help us to mount our S3 buckets as a drive or a file system and will help us to access the objects in the bucket through a file interface. So in this video we're going to talk about that feature. So ladies and gentlemen I welcome you all in this video where we're gonna learn about mount point for Amazon S3. We'll get to know what it is, what all its features is, what all it can do, what all it cannot. Then we will have a step-by-step -step demo to install and configure. So let's begin guys. So first of all, what is mount point for Amazon S3? AWS has been very clear that S3 was Intend to, intended to be used as an object store only and not as a file system. But sometimes it is desired that using it, con using it in conjunction with those tools that can read and write files while also taking advantage of S3 scale, durability and the elasticity and it really makes sense in many situations, right? Therefore, mount point for Amazon S3 helps us to achieve that basically it's an open source file client which will provide a file interface to access our s3 buckets now how does it do that it basically translate your local file system api calls to s3 object api calls which are normally rest api calls in the backend it supports your file based workloads that which performs sequential and random read so it's a good fit for a sequential as well as a random read cases where it can have multiple access towards the s3 bucket and where your workloads do not need full POSIX semantics because it is not it does not have at this point of time all the POSIX uh, semantics available it is or it can be used for your large scale read heavy applications such as data lakes, machine learning training, image rendering, your autonomous vehicle use cases, your ETLs and much more. So this is basically where you can start using your mount point for Amazon S3 as it is generally available for your production based use cases. Now what are the features which it has right? First of all we will see what all it can do can read files up to 5 TB of the size. It can also perform that file based operations like list and read your existing files. You can also create new files. Now it is also very important to understand what all it cannot. So the, based on that information you can decide whether mount point for Amazon S3 is a, this is a tool which you want to use. So it cannot modify existing files. It cannot delete directories and it's very very important to understand. It does not support symbolic link or a, or a path to a different directory or different file. And it does not support file locking. Again, it's very important to understand because it does not support the file locking. So it cannot determine who is writing at which time. So therefore, it is a suitable tool for having an application which is has sequential reads to your workload so therefore you can use it so these are the features which you need to keep in mind before you decide upon whether you want to use it or not now what all you need to do it right so you need an ec2 instance basically an amazon linux based instance because mount point is only available for linux based operating systems as of now you would require IAM credentials basically a role which you will assign to your EC2 instance and which has appropriate bucket permissions on S3 bucket. You need a package to install the mount point package which would be installed in S3. 
so all these things you will require to start using mount point for your s3 buckets so let's see quickly jump into the amazon management console or aws management console and see how we can configure it so guys we are in the aws management console so i have already uh, opened it for us and logged in so let's first create the ec2 instance quickly so currently i am in mumbai region so i'm going to click on launch instance i'll quickly do that and if you need a uh, elaborate uh, you know details about how to create an ec2 instance so we have multiple videos uh, which you can have a look at and i would provide the details in the description in the video as well so i'll quickly go through it. let's call it as three mount point not sam it's a demo server i'm gonna pick amazon linux i'm gonna keep it by on default a t2 micro there's a free tier eligible pick up the key pair and i have already a security group so i'm gonna keep that way i'll just keep pick that one and that's it so i'm going to launch instance so now my instance is being launched in the backend let in the meantime I'll show you the bucket which i have already created for this uh, specific demonstration so i have this demo mount, mount point bucket and in the bucket i have a file called index.html which i kept it ready for this uh, for the demonstration part as i said we will also require an iem role so i have already created a role but just to show you how to go about it you can click on create role pick uh, pick your role for aws service pick your use case in our scenario this is commonly used service that is ec2 and pick the first one basically where you allow ec2 instances to call aws services on your behalf click on next pick your permission policies i need a policy which allows me to have access to s3 so i'm going to go with the name as an s3 full access also you can tweak it the policy based on your need and requirement you can tweak it or you can limit it to the single s3 bucket as well now give it a name you can say role s3 for ec2 or some some kind of a meaningful name you can provide it and you can just go through the options which you have configured and click on create role as i have already done it so i'm gonna just cancel this one right so this is the role which we have already created now let's see if our machine is ready so if we come back here so it says it's running so if i see s3 in mount point demo that is my server now let's quickly uh, before we connect to it i would assign that i am role to this specific uh, ec2 click on actions go to security and go to modify i am role select your role which is in the drop down pick it one and update the i am role and this will basically align or assign that role to this ec2 instance and that ec2 instance will be allowed to access that s3 bucket now let's connect to our ec2 quickly click on connect i'm going to use ec2 instance connect so which is basically a very good mechanism to have uh, ssh or the terminal ready for you in your browser itself it's going to take a few seconds let's quickly i'm going to elevate my privileges and here we go now we have got three components out of the four which we discussed we have our ec2 instance we have our s3 bucket and we have our im role ready and assigned to our ec2 instance now the next thing we need to download the package so every linux flavor has a different uh, package which can be downloaded from the url which has been given into the documents i will also provide this url into our description below the video as well so let let me quickly grab the url so here we go i'm just copy pasting it here so this is the url i'll just enter it so now the package is being downloaded once the package gets downloaded now what we need to do we need to install the package but before we install it uh, we need to create a mount point at a specific directory so i would like to create a directory before and keep it ready beforehand i'll let's call it asset now install your s3 or the mount point for s3 package so yum install and now it's going to get installed so it says yes i'm going to select yes now it is installing for us now we are ready what we have done we have downloaded and we have installed now next 
part we need to configure the uh, I mean before you start using this mount point for S3 you require that it has to be configured as a mount point so we have already created that directory in the previous step named asset now we to mount our bucket let me first clear it mount our bucket what I need I need the mount S3 command I need the bucket name and the directory right so from here I can pick my bucket name here is the bucket name I'm just gonna copy paste it here let's go back to our console and um, before with that let's do an ls and see we have this directory asset and we have this package so now I'm gonna mount it so I already copied the command so here is the command so this is mount dash s3 is the command this is my bucket name and this is the asset directory which we just created so click on enter so it says the this is mounted at asset if I just switch to that directory and do a list command so you'll see I have that index.html which was inside this bucket see so now this index.html is is available to our EC2 instance now let's try to create a new file as mount point for S3 allows us to create the new file so let's see you can use your favorite editor so I want to call it index 2.txt let's say this is the test file for mount point control x and yes and enter so now we have this index 2.txt created let's see whether it's visible in our bucket or not just go back or maybe you can refresh it from here and see we have this index.txt available here so see it can immediately get synced with our s3 bucket now if i go and try to edit the previous file if you remember from the what all it can and it cannot do it cannot edit the existing file let's see whether I check whether it's possible or not so if i go there index.html is the file uh, i'm gonna just quickly try to make some changes to it maybe this way and try to come out of it i said yes and enter and if you see it says error writing index.html you operation not permitted so i cannot do any changes so i cannot edit the existing file of course i can create files i can read files i can list files right so if i just again try to come out of it this time i'm saying i don't want to make the edit now let's see can i remove the files if i go rm let's say i will let me i have just created another file index 2 i'm going to use that file and see whether i am able to delete it or not so let's try quickly and it says operation not permitted right so you cannot delete the file which you created now there is a parameter which you need to pass on while starting up or while configuring the mount point which will allow you to perform this operation because you can create you can delete those files which you have created so we'll do that and we'll come back to that now let's try to create a directory one more directory I'm, I'm going to create a directory under the asset I'm going to call it delta let's say call it delta now if I do an ls it will start showing me this delta is there index.html there index2.txt is there but if I go into my bucket if I this is my bucket and if I check here I still cannot see it so your directory which you have created will not be visible into your s3 bucket till the time it contains a file right you understand that mount point for s3 does all the operations by translating file api calls to the rest api or s3 api calls so the api calls has to be the matching one before i actually actually start translating them to the s3 object apis or perform those s3 based operations now if i let's do that way i'll copy the file i want to copy this index dot two txt to the delta so I, i'll just do that and now it is copied now let's go back and see what has happened nothing is there i'm just going to refresh it now you can see it started showing that folder sign under this delta directory which we created and if i just go inside it you'll see that index.txt is there right 
now let's go back let's change to delta directory and see what all we have we have got index.txt now try to remove that file so it says yes and it says operation not permitted still so you saw that now the directory is available but again the file which i created is still not deletable and i'm not able to delete it so let's see how we can go about it so to delete the file we need to pass on an allow delete parameter while we are mounting the bucket to our assigned directory so how to go about how to do that i'll just come back again right and i'll use the same command which we have here i'll now i'm gonna mount the whole s3 bucket under a different directory i'm gonna call it delta 2 so let's create this directory quickly delta 2 right and now i'm going to mount that bucket there so i have got the same command i'm gonna use i'm gonna use the same command and i'll just put it here but thing is that if i just press enter now this will not give us the delete access so what i need to pass on i need to pass on parameters such as allow delete now if i put this parameter then i would be able to remove the files also there is one more parameter which you should be aware of allow others if you want to give access to the users of to different account then you need to pass on the parameter call allow others this one right so i'm not going to do that i'll just to make sure that you understand it so let's go with the delete one so it says this has been mounted at delta 2 now if i switch to mount to delta 2 and do an ls you can see we have this delta index.html index.txt and this is what the bucket has right if you go to the bucket delta index that the same bucket has been mounted as a mount point here right now if i want to delete it let's say index to i want to delete if i do an ls you can see it has been deleted if i do the other file ls now you can delete right so this is how you go about deleting the files by, by passing these parameters when you're starting up or configuring the mount point now i'll come back i want to unmount it to, to unmount the command would be mount So if you see now it has been unmounted from the delta 2 if i change to that directory enter and if i do an ls now and see there's nothing now this is totally empty so it has been unmounted so that's it guys for the today's demonstration what we saw uh mount point for amazon s3 what all it can do what all it cannot also we saw its feature now let's so these are the important points which we need to remember regarding a mount point for s3 so first of all it's an open source file client which basically helps us to mount s3 bucket as a local file system it gives our applications access to those elastic storage and those durable storage of uh, s3 basically through a file interface and mount point for s3 is available only for linux based operating systems as of now and you can use mount point to access s3 object in certain specific classes there are certain classes which you still cannot use like your glacier flexible retrieval your glacier deep archive your intelligent tiering archive and your intelligent tiering deep archive so you still cannot use these uh, storage classes along with your mount point let's